What's up guys, Tommy Benny here, and today I'm gonna discuss the most common mistakes slash challenges that you're gonna face when it comes to carving your snowboard. So make sure you stay to the end, whether you're a beginner carver or an advanced carver, we're gonna discuss some really awesome tips. So on that note, let's get started. So the first things first guys, let's define what a carp turn is. Essentially what a carp turn is, is that your nose is gonna create a path that your tail follows the exact same line. And the result of that is, you're gonna see a nice slice in the snow. Now a skidded turn is when you have like a wide turn, almost like smearing peanut butter on a sandwich. You're like smearing it around. So if you guys are thinking you're carving or you think you're skidding, you're not totally sure, the easiest thing you can do is go ride down across the mountain and then look behind you and see what line that you see in the snow. And that's gonna be a big point is just identifying, are you skidding? Are you carving? Now the benefits of carving are being able to do some freestyle stuff, which is ride half pipe, throw tricks off jumps, and even go up to rails. But beyond freestyle, it's being able to traverse across the hill. It's being able to maintain your speed or accelerate while changing the direction. So they're extremely useful. Being able to carve is super awesome, but being able to identify if you're carving or not is where this video is gonna be focusing on. The first big challenge that we're gonna cover today is how the heck do I carve my snowboard if I'm skidding? And it comes down to pressure management. Simply meaning, if you have too much weight over one foot and your other foot is sliding around, kind of like a windshield wiper, how it kind of like does this, that pressure management is, um, is going to make the carve way more challenging or carving, causing you to skid. So what you need to do is make sure you're distributing your weight on the edge equally by either pressing, pressing down your toes or lifting up your toes and make sure your whole weight is balancing across the edge. So a great exercise that you guys can do is find a nice place on the side of the mountain and just find the balance point of being on your edge, both heel side and toe side. So the goal on toe side is being able to press your hips forward, feel your shins pressing against the front of your boot and allowing your board to create an edge angle or tilt, but you're not just falling over with your chest. So being able to manage that. Now on your heel side, it is a little bit more difficult to be in a static position, but you are trying to press the back of your legs or your calves against the back of your boots. As you press on the high back, it's gonna naturally start to get your board to tilt. Now again, it's a great exercise just to find what that balance point is. So when you start moving, you're trying to simulate the same exact thing. Now for me personally, I ride with zero high back angle because I like to have a little bit more room for air when it comes to freestyle stuff. But if you're solely looking to rip it up on some carbs, consider adding some forward lean to make your board that much more responsive. So that is the first exercise that you can do the next time you go snowboard. So when you guys are making those heel side and toe side carve turns and you're getting a little bit of rotation, again, the goal is to make sure your weight is distributed evenly. And the one thing I like to add is lift up all of my toes equally to the top of my boots on my heel side edge, allowing me to get a little bit more tilt, essentially locking in that board just a little bit more. Another thing about these turns that you saw here is that I was initiating my carve, getting on that edge, but then I felt like I was going a little fast and I needed to manage my speed. So I got my boy Easy here. You may have seen him in a video before, he's the boy. Uh, so what Easy is gonna do is he's gonna give us a really cool task to be able to help us manage our speed when it comes to carving so that we don't have to resort to skidding, that we can keep our carve. There's a big difference between open turns that might look like this in the snow versus closed turns 
that might look a little bit more like that. So a really good task that you could do at your mountain is find a spot where you have enough pitch, like a green run, it doesn't need to be terribly steep, but try to find a spot with very little traffic. Like this hill in front of us right now, there's like two people down the hill. So we know we can avoid them and we can look uphill and make sure that we're not gonna get hit by somebody coming down the hill. So then what you could do is start on one side of the run, look uphill, make sure nobody's coming, drop in down the hill. You do wanna build up a tiny bit of speed, then put on that tilt and steer across the hill. Hold that edge, hold that tilt, work on that pressure management. Try to not let your board skid or pivot on the snow. Lock in that edge and ride it all the way across the hill. See if you can even steer it back up the hill. You make a perfect C turn across the hill. Just one carve turn. And if you do it all the way to failure and you fall down because you lose enough speed and you fall down uphill, you did it right. And just one thing to add, if you're falling, just understand that you're losing all your momentum. So you're not necessarily crashing, but you're having to be losing all your momentum and then just sitting down, right? So we're gonna show you this task real quick and do this both on your heel side and toe side. And I just wanna piggyback on the safety aspect. Find a run that no one's there and make sure as you go across the fall line, heel side, toe side, watch out for traffic. It doesn't matter if you're right or wrong, getting hurt sucks either way. The goal is to go from this spot right here, go across the mountain and then end up back over there. So let's show you how it's done. <gasps> Notice how this line is super thin. That is the goal when you're carving, is to make your line itty bitty and a slicer. If you're, if you're really trying to get better at carving, there is that possibility that you might have equipment that isn't the best for carving. Um, there's a lot of different boards out there and a reverse camber board might be super fun, easy to turn, good for beginners, but they're not necessarily the best for carving. Uh, Tommy and I both ride traditional camber because that's what traditional camber does. It locks into the snow, it decambers, and it grabs the snow. A reverse camber board, simply you have to work harder to make it bite into the snow. You might have to tilt your board more than I do because of your equipment. And so about the equipment, one thing that I highly, highly suggest you do is don't go online and just go buy a board. My opinion is to go demo a snowboard. You can go to a shop and go ask the guys there, hey, I'm trying to do this specific uh, application or outcome and I'm trying to do this. They're gonna give you some, give you some suggestions and then you're gonna go demo three boards and go contrast this board versus this board, but this board and see how the board actually helps you or hinders you in the application that you're looking for. And for this example, it would be carving. Uh, so definitely demo that. Another big common issue is that your lead shoulder is going in a completely different direction as the direction you want your board to go. So they're contradicting each other. So one thing that I like to coach athletes, other instructors, or even beginners is being in an anticipatory position. Meaning as I'm going on a toe side turn that my lead shoulder is stacked over my board and my lead shoulder is a little bit closed anticipating that toe side turn. Now when I'm on my heel side edge, I may have my shoulder open just a little bit. Now. Let's say you've become really awesome at carving. Yes, you can lock in your edge and have your shoulders really, really open or really, really close and super twisted just like this. But you gotta understand getting that board locked into the snow, your edge biting the snow, slicing the snow, and then it allows some more flexibility in the upper body. But don't 
let the body fight against you, let it work with you until you really master locking in that edge. Alrighty guys, so on that note, we're gonna end that there. If you guys disagree or agree, or you feel like I missed anything, let me know in the comments below, because I can always do a version 2.0, 3.0, and readdress it, because I want to make you guys as awesome as possible. And if you guys want to support the channel at all, feel free to grab a sticker, and I do sell merch, so go ahead and check that out. All that stuff is gonna be in the description. And nothing but love, my dudes, we out.